Hello, everyone. Welcome to Bookselling University. I'd like to thank Brian Judd and APSS who asked me to prepare this course, and I thank you for watching. I sincerely hope you get a lot out of it. My name is Michelle DiFilippo. I own 1106 Design, and I've worked in the book publishing industry since 1972. Today, I'd like to share with you many of the things I've learned in that time and in this dynamic industry. Today, we'll start with positioning and why it's critical to your book's success. Then we'll move on to four additional topics. What is a book cover? How should it look? What makes it work? And choosing the right cover designer. What is positioning? Positioning is quite simply identifying which readers are the primary market for your book. Major publishers always, always conduct positioning research before deciding to publish a book, and certainly before they begin to market a title. To properly position your book, you must ask three questions. What, be what best-selling books are like mine? Who reads them? And where are these books sold? No book is for everyone. Answering these three positioning questions will help you target your marketing to the readers most likely to be interested in your book. This is important because it will save you time, it will save you frustration, and it will save you money. Here's a quick example of the difference that proper positioning can make for a book. We worked with author Mary McSchmidt, who wrote a memoir. The working title when she came to us was from the heart of a helmswoman, seeking balance on these great lakes we call home. Mary described her book as one that would interest grassroots organizations advocating for the restoration of and the protection of the Great Lakes. It was a cause that she was very passionate about. She also thought her book would appeal to area residents and tourists who enjoyed sailing on the lakes. Her plan was to market it regionally. We brought in positioning expert Amy Collins of NewShelves.com. Amy read the book and saw, saw far more possibilities in it than Mary imagined. Amy agreed that conservationists and political types would find the book appealing, but they were not the primary market as Mary had thought. Amy recognized that Mary's personal reflections throughout the book reflections about a woman discovering large parts of herself while doing other things would appeal to a much, a much wider market, such as readers who enjoyed Eat, Pray, Love, and Wild. With this new perspective, what changed? To speak to the target market, the title became Uncharted Waters. The subtitle became Romance, Adventure, and Advocacy on the Great Lakes. The result? The book now has a look and a feel and a marketing plan that is much broader than the Great Lakes community. Once your target market has been identified, it's time to focus on more general cover design principles that apply to every book cover. So I always like to start by asking what seems like a silly question. What is a book cover? Many people think that book cover creation is a simple task find a picture, add a title, done. But this is an oversimplification. Your book cover is actually a retail package that tells the world about your book. We buy books in exactly the same way we buy any other retail product, whether it's cereal, shampoo, or auto parts. Something about the package grabs our attention. The largest text on the box makes a promise and then the details convince us to spend money on this product versus another one. When we look at any package, we ask ourselves one question, what's in it for me? Your book cover has to answer that single question in about three seconds. That's a big job. So where do we begin? How should your cover look? The answer is, it depends. What is your book about? What is your audience looking for? What exactly are you selling? The answers to these questions determine the look of your cover. If your book is fiction, you're selling entertainment, drama perhaps, mystery, 
intrigue, romance, maybe adventure. The title and graphic should pique the buyer's curiosity and hint at the story. The cover should not satisfy that curiosity or give away the story. We want the reader to imagine that this is a good book and we want them to buy your book based on that imagination. There are different ways to do this. Sometimes the author's name dominates the design, as on the left. Sometimes there's a small but meaningful graphic, as in the middle book. And sometimes the image and the title are of equal importance, as with the book on the right. Your nonfiction book sells information. On a nonfiction cover, the title, the cover text, and the graphics must show and tell the buyer exactly what is inside the book to move them toward the purchase decision. Wheat Belly is a cookbook that asks us to give up bread and pasta, which is unthinkable to most people. So the cover reassures the prospective buyer. 30 minute recipes, gee, I can do this. 200 of them, I'm bound to like some of them. And images of food that look normal, not so crazy after all. Laugh Out Loud Jokes for Kids uses funny but old fashioned fonts to send a serious message to parents that this book is safe for their children to read. Humans of New York uses pictures to tell us that this is, well, a picture book. Some books sell two things, the author and the topic. If you are the product, your picture and the topic belong on the cover. The buyer is interested in the message as well as the expert who is delivering that message. If you're planning a book series, all the titles should be written and all the covers should be planned before the first cover is designed to establish a clear, recognizable brand for your book. 10 Shoes Up is a novel by Phoenix author Gary Stewart. On the right are four concepts for the second book in his series. The fonts are the same, the background images and the colors change, but it's still clear that any one of these concepts belong with his first book. Once the manuscript is complete, you are no longer a writer. You are the owner of a publishing business. Once you know what you're selling and who you're selling it to, it's time to think like a publisher. When publishers design a cover, they don't care what the author likes. They only care about what the buyers like. It's easy to find out what the public likes. We can go online and look at what they're buying, the best sellers. To get a sense of what your cover should look like, study best-selling books in your genre, look at upcoming releases from major publishers, and talk to the buyer at your local bookstore. Then share this information with your cover designer so the two of you can emulate the look and feel of these books that are successful. In this way, you can borrow bestseller credibility for your title. In the business books above, the design is straightforward. Classic fonts telegraph the message that the advice inside is reliable, and that's exactly what business book buyers want. They don't have time to waste with advice that is not going to work in their business. In these mystery suspense bestsellers, the colors are bold and the title type is in your face, not to be ignored. Can you feel your blood pressure rising already? you know adventure is on the way. In these religious spiritual bestsellers, the look is entirely different. The colors are soft, light emanates from the background. The look and feel of these covers is, well, heavenly. Once you have an idea of how the cover should look, we need to think about what makes a cover work, and that is the cover text. Remember, buyers, don't know a thing about your book yet. We have to tell them what your book is about. Will it entertain them? Will it educate them? Will it help them solve a problem? If the cover text answers yes to these questions, buyers will happily send us money. If the cover text confuses buyers, they'll buy someone else's book. So how do we answer these questions? Primarily with the title. Your title should be short and straight to the point. 
short words and titles lend themselves to eye-catching design. Short titles are easy for everyone to remember and easy for you and for others to say, and you will be saying your title a lot. In nonfiction, titles don't always tell us enough. Subtitles are needed to support and explain the main title. This title and subtitle, The Daniel Plan, 40 Days to a Healthier Life, deliberately sends a biblical message to Pastor Rick Warren's target market. If you pack your title and subtitle with keywords, your book will pop up in online searches, even if someone is not looking for a book at that moment. Look at all the keywords on this cover. Faith, food, fitness, focus, friends, healthier life. All of these topics are highly searched online. Your cover design should have a clear hierarchy so buyers get the most important information first. There should be no doubt in their mind what your book is about. Our eyes naturally go to the largest or the brightest item on a page. Author's name should be small unless you are already famous and people are looking for you as well as your topic. The cover design also must capture the mood of the book. On the left, the photo and title tell us that this is not going to be a happy story. The design in the middle book tells us, without us having to think about it, that this text is going to make us laugh. On the right, the title and the photo convey that this book tells a sentimental story. Make sure the mood of your cover matches the mood of your text. I'm often asked if other text belongs on the front cover, for example, endorsements or the name of the person who wrote the foreword. If the person is a celebrity whose name would be recognized by everyone in the country, then sure, go ahead, put them on the front cover. Otherwise, move the text to the back cover or inside the book. Remember that on a cover, less is more. A cover is like a billboard, too many messages confuse the buyers and confused buyers don't buy. If the front cover has done its job, it pulls the buyer to the back cover or to the description online. The back cover closes the sale for you. Every word counts. If it doesn't sell your book, leave it off. How long should the back cover text be? Today's buyers want information and they want it fast. Keep their attention with no more than 300 words, max. A headline, a short summary, bullet points, and a call to action. The days are gone when we can put 700 words on the back cover of a book. I'm often asked, should your bio go on the back cover? It depends. If your bio establishes your authority to write the book, then by all means, go ahead and include it. Otherwise, move your bio to the inside back pages of your book. Should your photo go on the back cover? Unless you're well known, don't waste the space. Every square inch of your back cover should be used to sell your book. What about the spine of your book? The spine of your book has one purpose, to be seen from a distance when your book is on the shelf. Spine design must catch the eye, so you should use as few words as possible and as large as possible. Emphasize the most important words with a larger size, a brighter color, different font, or all of the above if the spine is wide enough to allow you to do that. As you can see, there's a lot to think about in cover design. Your cover is the focus of your marketing effort. Every tweet, every blog post, every press release will bring buyers to your cover. You have just one chance to capture their attention and hold it and convince them to buy your book. Fortunately, this is what book cover designers are trained to do. Please, please, please hire a book cover design pro. I promise you will not regret it. The next four slides compare do-it-yourself covers with a professionally designed cover. Before your book cover is designed, you can type your title into Amazon to get a preview of the kinds of books Amazon will display. That's exactly what I did for these next four slides. The do-it-yourself cover on the left has no emotion. The colors are drab, the baby isn't smiling, the photo is poorly lit. 
the professional photo cover on the right is delightful. A great title, professional illustration, lots of color, a childlike font, all these elements work together to make us want to buy this book. In these two examples, the do-it-yourself cover on the left fails in the typography department. The title is too long, the font is difficult to read, and there's entirely too much imagery in the background. On the right, the title is much easier to read. The font is distressed, but it's not corny. The bright image below seems to reflect light on the subtitle. This cover is very well done, even if vampires creep you out. The do-it-yourself cover on the left here doesn't express the correct mood for the book. The description of Lucy's Christmas Miracle on Amazon says this book is a heartwarming story about the rescue of a toddler. Does this cover look heartwarming to you? On the cover on the right, the typography, the color, the greeting card imagery immediately tell us that this book is filled with heartwarming stories. Which book would you buy? The cover on the left was designed by a general graphic designer, not a cover designer. The cover has no hierarchy. The title doesn't stand out. The fonts are bland. The torn paper border serves no purpose. One could say that the oversized gold key pops, but it actually draws the eye away from the title. In the redesign on the right, the border is gone. The title treatment consists of three colors and three type sizes to draw the eye. The huge key is replaced with a more subtle graphic, and the colors on the dog's tie and in the background were changed to match that new graphic. Now the cover has a unified look that can be understand understood in one quick glance. Now that we've gone through these examples, how do you find the right cover designer? If, you're, if you've just written your first book and you're looking for a designer for the very first time, it can seem like a daunting experience. My advice first, choose a cover designer who specializes in book cover design. Creating a good book cover takes a lot of practice, years of practice, in fact. General graphic designers who are very talented with other items, such as newspaper ads or annual reports, often cannot capture the unique look of a book cover. Next, review the designer's portfolio, but don't look at the portfolio in isolation. Open two windows on your browser and compare the designer samples to the best sellers to make sure the designer works at that level. Finally, talk with the designer. Get to know the human being behind the website and make sure the chemistry is right. There's no substitute for a conversation. So you may be thinking, what will I get? What questions should I ask the designer? Designers are independent business owners who work in different ways. The important thing is to clarify expectations up front. Ask the designer about their process, their rates, their turnaround times. Don't be shy and don't assume anything. If you have a firm deadline, such as a speaking engagement, let the designer know during the very first conversation. Designers want to meet your needs. The last thing we want to discover is that we have to finish your book cover in a week because you have a speaking engagement you didn't tell us about. One important point you may want to bring up is the difference between concepts and variations. Concepts are distinctly different design approaches that give you a choice of directions to follow, as shown on this slide. Usually, multiple concepts are, are presented and one concept is chosen for further refinement. These three con covers are variations. One concept has been altered in just a minor way, in this case, the color. Concepts take more time to develop than variations, of course, so make sure that you and your designer are on the same page. Make sure you understand what you're going to get for the price. Now, nobody likes financial surprises. So no matter who designs your cover, there will be revisions. Ask your designer how many revisions are included in the price and the hourly rate for revisions beyond that. Low-cost designers have been known to disappear 
when the number of revisions requested exceed the amount of time that they can spend on the job. Don't let that happen to you. When interviewing your designer, ask as many questions as you like and run away from anyone who doesn't provide patient and courteous answers to you. Well, that concludes the course. I thank you very much for listening. I hope you have a wonderful covered design experience and all your publishing dreams come true. If you need more information, I'd love to hear from you. Thank you very much.